Hey guys, good morning. This is Caleb with Caleb's EDC Corner, and I know it's been a few weeks since I've uploaded a video. Life has been absolutely crazy, uh, but I appreciate you guys watching and continuing to watch. I wanted to share today just um, a little bit of what I've been doing. And um, if you're on social media, you've probably seen a lot of this stuff uh, posted up in picture form. Um, but Recently, I finished a flintlock rifle build, and this is a project that I've been working on for um, over seven months, and so this has been really rewarding to get done, and I've also taken a step into the um, 18th century um, living history society. All of the um, folks there are amazing. And so I've met some amazing people and I just kind of wanted to share my journey into that. Um, as you can kind of see, I'm not dressed in 18th century gear. Um, <laughs> I'm still building up my kit for that, but I wanted to show you um, really what I've been working on and a couple things that I've, that I've um, noticed as I've kind of gone through this journey. One thing I can tell you is that these people that uh, are involved in living history and um, this whole world of uh, reenacting and all of this are amazing people. I've um, actually been mentored over the last um, six or seven months by uh, some people that have really helped me. Um, they've given me gear, they have helped me with my rifle build, um, different things, questions that I have. And so let me just kind of share with you what really sparked my interest into all of this and for many people that are kind of my age um, there was a film um, <laughs> last of the Mohicans that came out this this came out when I was a kid um, and I gotta say this is probably um, my if not my favorite probably top two favorite films of all time um, it's just amazing and I just remember as a kid watching this and just really being, it really sparked something in me as a, um, as a love for, for this kind of thing. I can kind of trace it back to that. My grandparents would take me to uh, reenacting festivals. Here in our area, you have the Feast of the Hunter's Moon. We had the Psychot Festival. And those all sparked in me when I was just a kid, a love for this kind of stuff. Um, so without further ado, let me show you the rifle that I just got finished building. Okay, this is a kit build, and uh, this is, I tried to get my lighting so where I could show off some of this curly maple. This is a 54 caliber Kibler's uh, Colonial kit, and this would, this kit would um, portray a rifle from the uh, about 1760s is what Jim Kibler says. There is so much guys that if I get something wrong, don't hang me. Um, <laughs> I'm still learning <laughs> myself, um, but 54 caliber. Um, like I said, this took about seven months to build. Uh, I did document it with pictures. I was not into the video scene at that, at that time. Um, it does have a removable patch box which I keep some extra flints in here and uh, some other things there. Um, I'm so pleased with how this turned out. Curly maple stock on it. The lock is amazing. And really what, from what I know, what sets Kibler apart from a lot of these other imports and things like that is the quality, not only of the, uh, the stock that you're getting and the barrel, but the quality of the lock. Your flint lock is only as good as the lock itself because if the lock doesn't work right, your firearm is not gonna work right. Um, I have shot this last week. I shot it for the first time and I'm hooked. Um, I was hitting really well with it um, and it's just a joy to shoot. I do plan to hunt with this this fall. And um, yeah, so this is my rifle and um, I'm very pleased with it. Let me try to get a few closer shots here. This is the lock. 
and uh, yeah the brass is looking really good I did not patina the brass but I did with the um, instruction of one of my mentors um, he told me take a dirty patch when you're cleaning the rifle and just rub down the brass with a dirty patch and it instantly ages it looks really good so I did not spend money on uh, artificially aging the brass I just uh, wiped them down with a dirty patch so uh, curly maple stock this is the most basic grade of stock that you can get from Kibler so that speaks volumes in and of itself because to me this looks like a grade A stock um, amazing curl in that uh, it's just beautiful the curl um, and I'm getting it all throughout the rifle so this is a user this is not a wall hanger um, I do plan to hunt with this as well and so it's not um, it's not super fancy I didn't do a whole lot of carving on it first of all I'm not qualified to do that uh, but I didn't pay anybody to do any carving on this because I want this to just be a user rifle that I can go out and hunt with so what are some other uh, pieces of gear that that I've acquired since finishing the uh, Kibler uh, kit um, so of course you're gonna need a powder horn and this is my powder horn I picked this up at the five metals at the trace event that we have here in Ligonier Indiana and uh, this is a French and Indian War style powder horn with some amazing carving on it the carving is actually of a fort and which would have been common and then there's some also some other folk art that is carved in here this is a really nice horn um, and it's got powder in it because I've been using it um, been shooting with it and it really works well and so this is my powder horn the strap is actually made by a, a weaver um, and I hope I get the name right but they were at the event and the, I believe they are the Stonehouse history um, she weaves these and this would have been a, a historically correct weave on this uh, on this strap here um, and so very pleased with the horn and then I, I just got um, a bag from one of my mentors uh, Mike Judson and this bag is made by Bob Browder of uh, Long Hunter uh, leather and it is just amazing let me uh, open it up here you can see the inside there it's like a plaid um, and then I'm not going to show you everything in here but this is uh, the 54 caliber round ball um, and I'm still kind of outfitting this kit what I do have on the strap is a touch hole uh, pick if you can kind of pick that up no pun intended and that clears the touch hole uh, if it gets a little clogged so I really like knives and so I had to get a, a period correct 18th century knife this is made by a local Indiana blacksmith named Kurt Lyles really awesome guy and this would be uh, the same style as an 18th century long hunters uh, belt knife or a, a belt knife for somebody on the frontier um, it's just awesome guys I, this is a hand forged knife um, and it's locally made one thing that I really like is to source things locally from my area because in the 18th century that's what you would have to do right you would unless you're getting trade goods of course but a lot of people would have sourced from their local uh, from their local folks another piece of kit that I got is this tomahawk this is made by a guy that I really look up to his name is Simeon England and look up his I'll link his um, site to the description look up Simeon England oh my goodness um, he does amazing work and he's just a really nice really nice guy this is a hand forged tomahawk 
Um, and so this is part of my kit. When I uh, do an impression, I plan to do an impression of a long hunter um, and a militia member. Um, to my, in my opinion, that's maybe some of the easier impressions to do. And I'm a hunter as well. Uh, and so I want to show you guys some resources as well. Um, so YouTube, as far as YouTube goes, um, a channel that has really helped me out a lot is Ethan over at I Love Muzzle Loading. Uh, I would encourage you to go check him out. Um, he is a wealth of knowledge and he's been great to talk to. Um, so go check out Ethan at I Love Muzzle Loading. Um, but also, um, subscribe to Muzzle Blast. Okay, this is the uh, National Muzzle Loader Rifle Association, the NMLRA. This is their publication, and uh, I get these regularly. They're a great read, and I still like reading. I, you know, you can get a lot online, but I really like having hard copies of stuff. I've got a whole stack of those now. Um, Townsend's has been really helpful. Uh, they are also Hoosiers, uh, which is great. And so I'd encourage you to check out Townsend's. They have uh, just all kinds of uh, gear, uh, different things like that that you can order from them. And also Ryan, the guy that works for them, makes amazing coffee, by the way. Blue Lion Coffee. Check them out. Also, there is a book. This actually came with my rifle. It's the um, Muzzle Loading Guide. So I grew up shooting muzzle loader, but I grew up shooting different kinds of muzzle loaders. And this is completely different than anything I've ever shot. And I can tell you the first time that I shouldered this <laughs> and that flash went off right here, it threw me for a loop. <laughs> I completely missed the target. Um, so I had to really teach myself you know how to um, how to shoot this and how to not allow that flash to affect your your accuracy so um, there is a learning curve and I'm learning and I'm very excited but guys this is one of just one of the um, highlights of this year and last year as far as gear goes I know this is not EDC um, I know my channel is about EDC and I don't plan to EDC um, an 18th century uh, rifle, <laughs> but um, I guess he could. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to show you what I've been up to. And I guess I could do a po pocket check for you. Um, so uh, today I'm carrying my large Sabenza 21. This is a mainstay for me. I love, love, love this knife. Um, I've had it for quite a few years now. It's seen a lot of use. So large Sabenza 21 in the pocket. But guys, I really appreciate you sticking with me. Thank you for your patience, by the way. Um, when it comes to my upload times, I have been, uh, seems like all my free time that I've had has been devoted to um, finishing this, shooting it, getting together with guys locally that are shooters that know way more than I do. So um, guys, thank you. Uh, for watching and I just wanted to share with you my heart this is uh, what I've been involved in and so guys take care thanks for watching I'm gonna have some more gear videos coming I've got a few in the queue that uh, I can't wait to share with you all right God bless